I'm Reverend Esther Young Grace. Shalom to all of you. And uh, stay tuned for Tape with Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I want to watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're going to watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. Glad you could be with us today. My guest today is someone I've wanted to have on the show for a long time. Rabbi Esther Youngrice, author and speaker and columnist and TV personality. Welcome to Chicago. My pleasure to be here. Ruchah Haba'ah. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for being with us. Um, Rabbi Zin Youngrice is speaking in Chicago. And uh, she's here to talk about, first of all, um, what we can do in life to make uh, our Jewish future uh, part of our lives and make our lives part of the Jewish future. Um, her book, The Committed Marriage, is uh, recently published, as well as her book, Life is a Test. And really, these books are a lot uh, about your life and your experiences and how we can try and follow that right path, aren't they? Well, actually, uh, the subject I was speaking on tonight is how to become a good player for your people. And that's such a profound thought. I would like you to think about that. If you have a great sports team, the best sports team, and you only have fans, and you don't have players, what happens to the team? Eventually, the team dies. A team cannot exist without good players. The best fans cannot make up for it. Painfully, the Jewish people today have a nation of fans. Yeah, we love the Jewish people. Yes, we love Jewish culture. Yes, Israel. Yes, this, yes, that. But we are absentee Jews, we are not players. We want our people to survive. We want our people to live. We must become players. And that was the subject I spoke on tonight. How to be a good player for your people. Now your book, The Committed Marriage, does it talk about how to find a spouse? Or does it talk about how to make your marriage more meaningful and more of a Jewish home? What is really uh, your message in that book to people? It encompasses everything. How to find your spouse, because that's very important. Of course. What to look for. Many years ago, a young girl came to my class. Very beautiful. I didn't recognize her, but everyone pointed her out to me. She was actually a TV anchor. And she came over to me and she said, Robinson, I am ready. And I heard that you're the right person to speak to. And I said, ready for what, sweetie? And she said, well, I'm ready to get married. I'm sick and tired of relationships. I want to get married. I said, great. What are you looking for? She said, well, I'm looking for a quality person. I said, what's a quality person? And she says, the big five. I said, the big five. What's the big five? Well, she says, number one, he has to be good looking. No, no, I have that chemistry, I said, of course. has to be smart, I like somebody who's real bright, a good sense of humor, I like to have fun, and I need somebody who's rich, because, you know, I'm used to a certain lifestyle, and also athletic, I like tennis. So I look at her and I said, sweetheart, good luck. And she said, what do you mean? You don't think I can find that? I said, you're asking for five different persons in one sugar. But even if you would find it, it doesn't mean anything. Those big fives are five big zeros. I said, what do you mean? I said, in Yiddish, we call it Gurnish mit Gurnish, GMG. Zeros without a digit in front of it amount to Gurnish mit Gurnish, nothing but nothing. So she says to me, what do you mean by that, Robinson? 
what digit are you talking about? I said, the Torah digit. What's a Torah digit? I said, the first word of the Torah and the last word of the Torah. That's the digit. The first word is base. Actually, the first letter I meant to say is base. And the last letter is lemon. Together, it spells lay heart. If it doesn't have a good heart, his good looks will turn ugly overnight. If it doesn't have a good heart, his money will be there to control you. If it doesn't have a good heart, his sense of humor will be there to ridicule you. If it doesn't have a good heart, his brilliant mind will be there to mock you and to manipulate you. And if you want somebody who is athletic, big deal. Get a trainer. But where do you get a good heart? So she said, Rebbit, you got something. A good heart, but where do I find him? So I told her, it's not so simple. Because you have to work on having a good heart. Come to our Torah classes. When you study Torah, Hashem helps you to recreate yourself, remold yourself. Torah enters your heart. It's not just education for your mind, it's for your heart. And once you master that, then you know how to find a good life. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, what a message, what a message to tell. I, I, I must tell you that uh, um, your speech tonight is, is so moving, and we want to listen to a few, uh, a few things that you have to say in your speech tonight. So stay with us here on Tape with Rabbi Doug. Rabbitson, Esther young Rice, speaking for the Chicago Tour Network, and we'll be back. The subject that was chosen for this evening is one that I believe is critical to all of us. How do you become a player for your people? Because at the end of the day, I mentioned this just a few minutes earlier, if you have the best sports team, but the best, and you only have fans, you don't have players, eventually the team dies. We have many Jewish fans who root for the Jewish people, but we don't have players, not enough. So tonight we will try to understand how to become players. And before I even get into the subject, allow me to share with you that in this past year, I have traveled the world I've spoken on every continent that Jewish people live. And I'm very saddened to share with you that there is a new escalation in anti-Semitism, the likes of which remind me of pre-Holocaust Europe, has special, God forbid. And our people are sleeping just like we slept prior to Hitler. There is one point difference between those years and today. Those years, Hitler had to rent cattle cars to deport us. Hitler had to build concentration camps, slave labor camps, and Hitler had to build gas chambers. Today, Khalila, Khalila, God forbid, he just has to push a button, just one button, and we are sleeping. If there is anyone in this room who imagines that perhaps this is in third world countries, but not in the civilized world, then allow me to tell you that Europe has become Arabia. We are the generation that has 
been destined to witness the fulfillment of the prophecy regarding to Ishmael. Para Adam is going to be a wild terrorist. Yadoba Kor, his hands is going to be everywhere. Yad Korbo, and his hands, people's hands will be with him. Rabbanei Kol Echabishkan, he's going to have cells all over the world. And if you think that the situation in the United States is calm, then allow me to remind you that not too long ago, an ex-president of the United States wrote a book, a bestseller, portraying Israel as an apartheid state, demonizing Israel. Allow me to remind you that in New York City, that's New York City, Ahmadinejad was welcomed and given a platform at Columbia University. And I'm not even going to discuss with you the new left sentiment in this country. And the Jewish self-haters who are right there with those who demonize the land of Israel. And I'm not even discussing with you the multitudes of our people who do not know what it means to be a Jew. So we are suffering internally and externally. And we are sleeping. From that beautiful introduction, you can understand that I'm not 20 years old. I've been around for a while. Actually, I'm doing kibble for already 50 years. So why do I keep going? And what keeps me going? My brothers and my sisters, I'm going to be honest with you. I am scared still. I'm frightened for our people. Oh, of course, like the time in Israel, Hakol Yabasedev, everything will be good. Of course I know that Hakol Yabasedev, that everything will be good. I knew that in Bergen Belsen also, while I was standing for war call every day, I knew that my people would survive. Because that's the chinuch, that's the education I received from my holy father, the great sage. Am Yisrael, the Jewish people, Chai, will live. Netzach Yisrael, Yishake, the Jewish people are eternal. And the prophets promised us that as long as the sun and the moon will exist, the Jewish people will exist. But Rabotai, my friends, there is a copa not at what sacrifice? Six million, do you understand that? Six million? It's beyond our comprehension. So tonight, with your permission, let's try to discover how we might become good players for Am Yisrael, the Jewish people. Because that's our imperative. That's our destiny. Every morning, towards the conclusion of our morning service, we have a prayer which is so poignant. At the end of Uvolatiyang, if you are familiar with the prayer book, if you're not, get familiar, familiar with it. The prayer book is your best friend. It is written, Almighty God, Shalom Galovic, please God, help me that I should not have labored for no. Shalom Nilid Labahala, that I shouldn't have been born for no reason. I shouldn't have been born in vain. There's nothing more devastating than to wake up one day and you realize that you misused your days. You misused your months, your weeks, your years. So how do we get to be good players? We are very fortunate tonight. 
because we are right, right so close, right behind Shavuot, the holiday when God gave us the Torah and we became a nation. It's on Shavuot that we became a nation. Although, mind you, the average Jew never heard of Shavuot. They heard of Pesach, yes, but Shavuot, what's Shavuot? Not for Shavuot, there are no Jewish people. That's when God gave us the Torah. So let me share with you some tidbits from that experience. And if we are going to internalize it, we will know how to be good players. There's nothing in the Torah that could be taken for granted. Nothing is written at random. Those of you who have heard me speak in the past, those of you who read my books, you know I never give my own opinion on any subject. Hakorbo, Hakorbo, the Kulabo. Turn the pages, turn the pages, everything is in it. Everything that I say, I substantiate with a passage from the Torah. Because I could be wrong. So, let's go to the moment when we became a nation. Where did God give us the Torah? Mount Sinai. Why are Mount Sinai? And as sages teach us, and most people know this teaching, that Mount Sinai was a little, small, unimpressive hell to teach us the importance of humility. Because God says, in the arrogant heart, there is no room for him. The person who is arrogant, you can't talk to him. He wrote the book. You can't teach him anything. The arrogant individual doesn't know how to say, I am sorry. Singles who come to me for a shudder, you know, interested in marriage, I always say, avoid arrogant people. Because it's, it's, it's torture to live with them. They are never wrong. Everybody else is wrong. And they can't learn. So God gave us the Torah, Amon Sinai, a small mountain, unimpressive, to teach us humility. But then again, why didn't God give us the Torah in a valley if humility is so important? Why even a small mountain? Correct? Am I getting feedback? So what do we do? Okay. So why on a mountain at all? Why not in a valley? So listen carefully, because as you we must have self-esteem. We must know who we are. We must have courage. We must have honor, respect, self-esteem. In this week's portion, this week's portion, the Jews who went to scatter the land, you know what their terrible sin was? They said, he went like grasshoppers next to the giants. A Jew should say he's a grasshopper. <coughs> I was in bed in Boston, a little girl, every morning standing for vocal, with my head shaved, covered with lights, dressed in rags. But I knew I was Am Yisrael. How did you say I'm a grasshopper? You're on the mountain. We are on a mountain. So how do we understand the law? So follow me carefully. In the name of that while he was in prison in Siberia, one night, 
he wakes up and he sees a fellow prisoner, not Jewish, because in Siberia they had Jews and non-Jews in the same camp. And this gentleman gets up in the middle of the night from under his so-called bed, because you can imagine the type of beds they had, he takes out something, puts it on his lapel, on his jacket, and he takes out a little mirror, looks in the mirror, talks to himself, salutes, takes it all off, goes back to sleep. Can't understand it. The next night, the same thing is repeated. Keeps watching. So Rabbi Yaakov Galinsky went over to him and said, excuse me, I couldn't help but notice. Every night, you get up and you put something on and you can't seem to talk what it is and you look into something that looks like a mirror and you talk to yourself, what's going on? <gasps> you saw me? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Just tell me, what is this all about? And he said, I was an officer in the Polish army. In this place, it's easy to become dehumanized, to forget who I really am. So every night I made myself a pledge. I am going to remind myself I'm an officer in the Polish army. I'm not a prisoner. And Rabbi Yaakov Gilinski started to cry and he said, this is a message for me, oh my God. I have to remember who I am. I stood at Sinai. I am Mamlachat Kohanim, a priestly kingdom. I come from Koi Kadosh, a holy nation. Never forget who you are. Never forget. And he never forgot. And that is what my father told me to remember in Bergen Belsen. He called us Jewish Schweinhund, Jewish pigs. But I know, I stood at Sinai. Never forget who you are. And to the ladies in the audience, may I just say, when God gave the Torah, he told Moshe Rabbeinu to first call Toma Lebet Yaakov, teach it to the women, because everything depends upon them. Whether the sons and the daughters will know who they are, that their husbands will be inspired, depends upon them. I'm here with Reverend and Esther Younggrace on Take to Thrive by Doug. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Nobody likes me. Nobody. Maybe it's because I like to attack people. Men, women, kids. I can reduce them to weak, stammering, confused, scared imitations of their former selves. If they don't stop me, I just might leave them that way for life. I am a stroke. Learn to recognize a stroke and act quickly. Time lost is brain lost. I'm Rabbi Shmuley Boteach, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. Welcome back. I'm here with Rebbitzin Esther Youngreis here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. Um, a wonderful speech tonight. A, a wonderful so evening. Hundreds and hundreds of people. There must have been five, six hundred people here. I've heard there was seven hundred. Seven hundred people. Unbelievable. Um, I wish you much success with, with the uh, committed marriage, with Life is a test. Give us one, one message out of life is a test. What test can we work on most 
to try and uh, overcome and succeed with? Everything in life is a test. Your whole life is a test. It's written, Elohim, Nisa, and Abraham, and God tested Abraham. Every day we are being tested. When you have a child, you are being tested as to what sort of a child you are to your parents, what sort of a student you are. And it's not a question of knowledge, it's a question of respect and goodness. And when you get married, you are being tested as to what sort of a spouse you are, and then what sort of a parent you are. The word test in Hebrew also means a banner. A banner that you see from a distance. Because one day when you are gone, your descendants will remember you by the banners that you left behind as to how well you passed your test. What a great message. So think about that, friends. How will my daughter, how will my son remember me one day? Will they remember me for being ill-humored, for being depressed? for being angry. Will they remember that while I was not well, I became cynical and nasty? Or will they remember that I kept my faith? Will they remember that daddy, when he lost his job, became an angry man? Or will they remember daddy shielded us and always had faith? Will they remember you for the Torah that you studied, for the Torah that you lived? for the Shabbos in your home, for your chesed, your kindness, for your smile, your love. Or will they remember that you were a depressed, angry, moody person? What will they remember? How well will you pass your test? Every day is a test. God bless you all. And you should help us to pass our test with honor and dignity. Thank you so much. Remember uh, to check out our show every week at this time. You can see us on the web at www.tvrabbi.com. If you want to send any email to me, I'll be happy to forward it on to the Rabbitson, info at tvrabbi.com. Thank you, Rabbitson, Esther Young Grace, for coming to Chicago, for being with us. Hope to see you next time right here on Taped with Rabbi Don. Shalom, everyone. Shalom to you, all day friends, and shalom to Rabbi Doug. And shalom to you, Rabbi